You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. All right, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Chris Burton. I am one of the PGY4s and chief resident here at UNM. Um, I just wanted to go down the list of the people that we have here uh, today, just so you guys know who all is involved in our program. So we have Diana Monahan, who's our awesome program coordinator. Um, we have, for our PGY1s, we have uh, Alexis uh, Hansen and Johnny Woodson. Uh, our PGY2s include Stephen Sen, Will Gensler, and Lana Ko. Uh, the PGY3s that we have here today are um, Kari Rizak and uh, Andy Becker. And then uh, one of my fellow PGY4s is Joe Parks. So feel free to um, type any questions you guys have in the chat as we go along, and they'll be happy to uh, answer them. This is Kari Rizak sporting some of our uh, some of our UNM gear. All right, so we are a categorical categorical program, meaning that you do do your um, PGY one through four years here. Um, our training occurs uh, through four different clinical sites. So um, you rotate through our Loveless UNM Rehab Hospital for all of your inpatient rehab. Um, and you rotate through UNM uh, main hospital as well as the associated clinics. Um, and then you get to rotate at the VA, uh, which is an awesome experience as well as our um, children's hospital. All of these sites are within about a five mile um, diameter. So, you know, if you're having to do something at one site, it's really not that big of a deal to um, hop in your car and drive over to the other hospital. Um, really kind of makes things convenient within our clinical rotations. Um, so the main site that you rotate at is the uh, Loveless UNM Rehab Hospital. This is a 62 bed uh, acute inpatient rehab hospital standalone, uh, although we do have um, two large hospitals um, across the street from us. So we have Loveless Main Hospital uh, as well as the Heart Hospital uh, and UNM really is not that far. Um, so we typically run about 52 to 54 on average for our average census, uh, unless we're really, really busy, which we might come close to, to the cap. Um, so we have both inpatient and outpatient services here. We are CARF accredited in brain injury, spinal cord injury, and stroke. Uh, this is a picture of the UNM main hospital. So um, a little bit bigger hospital, 556 beds. Uh, it's the only level one trauma center in New Mexico. And um, you do a lot of your outpatient clinic uh, rotations kind of in the surrounding clinics that are affiliated with UNM. So your sports and spine, your pain management, uh, as well as your neuromuscular and EMG. We are affiliated with uh, UNM Division I, Division I Athletics. So we have um, uh, good clinical rotations within um, the sports department there and you get to work with some of the team doctors, which is awesome. Um, Dr. Rizak and myself are doing the high school football coverage. So you're, you have that opportunity as well while you're here. The VA uh, that we get to work with is um, one of the higher complexity VAs in the country. So. Uh, level 1B, with, which is the second most complex patient population um, amongst all VAs. It's also a tertiary care referral center, so we get um, a lot of um, uh, patients coming in from all areas uh, of the Southwest. Um, and it's one of 24 VAs in the country that have their own designated spinal cord injury unit. So you do get to rotate through there um, as part of your spinal cord injury rotation. Um, this is actually a picture of the outpatient Kerry Tingley Hospital. Um, the inpatient Kerry Tingley uh, Rehab Unit is actually in the same building as um, the, the UNM uh, Main Hospital. Um, and it's the only pediatric rehab center in the state. Uh, and Kerry Tingley is also the uh, only full service children's hospital in the state. So just a brief overview of the uh, rotations. So we do five week rotations uh, during the year. Um, you, you do your inpatient rotations in two consecutive blocks. So you'll do 10 weeks of inpatient at minimum at a time uh, and, and occasionally 20. You do 13 and a half months of inpatient 
total in your residency training, you do two and a half months of consults and 20 months of outpatient. So a little bit more on the outpatient side um, and then your inpatient training, you are front loaded. And so you have the majority of your inpatient uh, rehab focus during your PGY2 year. Um, and then you get two elective blocks during your third and fourth year. So um, I kind of like this because I'm actually not going into general rehab. Um, you know, it's, it's not for everybody, but we do kind of keep up your skills as you go along um, in your third and fourth year. The nice thing about that is that you only take call when you are on uh, inpatient rehab. So uh, you take about eight weeks of call during your PGY2 year, two weeks of call during your third year, and then one week of call your fourth year. It's kind of nice. All right, talking about some res resident education. So for our didactics, um, we do it about three or four hours every Thursday morning, um, and we divide it up into different blocks. So these blocks rotate every 18 months. So if you do EMGs like in August um, during your second year, you might not get EMGs again until December or so your third year. Um, most of this is because um, we just have a lot of um, blocks to get through and you can see some of them listed here. Uh, I won't belabor that too much. Um, in addition to our didactics, we do um, grand rounds. So grand rounds is, uh, the, is the responsibility of the third year residents. Um, you know, we go over cases, we kind of have um, conversations about um, uh, different kind of PM&R um, pathology. Uh, we also do journal clubs. So, and we're actually going to a journal club tomorrow night at one of our attendings houses um, who is hosting. Um, this is the fourth year that's gonna be doing it. And then your quality improvement patient safety conferences or your QUIPS conferences um, are done by the PGY2s. And so this is essentially your M&Ms um, for those students that, that haven't really seen or, or heard of a different name for that. Um, we just go over cases and talk about what could have been done better. All right, so as it is typical with uh, almost all ACGME accredited programs, um, you do two scholarly activities completed over your course uh, of training. So one uh, research project, so you can do scientific research, education, case reports, um, reviews, et cetera. Um, and you also do one quality improvement project. So um, again, this is pretty typical. Um, we have a lot of um, faculty assistance with this, which is awesome. Um, Dr. Dutton, our program director, actually um, developed a QI curriculum so that we could kind of walk through and, um, and pace ourselves at least during our third year and, and make sure that we were on track to be able to, to present a, a, quality, a quality, quality improvement project. Um, you also, uh, we also identify faculty mentors for you during your second year. So uh, each resident um, is assigned one faculty mentor. So um, and this is different from any help that you get with your research or, or if you have like a PI on a, a research project that you're doing, this will be separate from that. Um, we try and assign these uh, mentors based on the resident's um, uh, interest. Um, you know, we, we do that as much as we can. Um, you meet with them quarterly and, and check in pretty often um, and they are there to basically assist you. Oh, accidentally pressed it. Uh, they're there to assist you with anything you need regarding your research projects um, or anything like with your career um, advice, you know, if you're going to go fellowship or um, kind of what next step to do in that realm. Um, and again, you know, our program director and our associate program director, Dr. Lacerda, um, are just amazing. They're, they're totally open to helping you out with um, whatever you need. I've reached out to them multiple times on things that they're not even you know, a part of research wise, and they've, they've given me good feedback on it. Um, we are big into resident wellness. Um, we have our own wellness committee, um, uh, which I'm a part of, um, and uh, Dr. Becker and Dr. Brizak are as well. Um, you know, we, we really like to have fun. We hang out outside of work. Uh, we also have uh, more of an official like physician student wellness office. Um, and the head of that office, uh, who's a psychiatrist by training, actually will come and talk with us like once a year um, and talk to us about things that we can maybe be taking advantage of that we haven't been. Um, a lot of awesome workout facilities and outdoor um, uh, activities that you can do through UNM, um, just even using their uh, medical school um, 
facilities. And you also get one half day of paid wellness per quarter. Uh, a couple pictures of some of our residents. This is Dr. Parks on the left with his two dogs. He now has three Huskies. Um, and then Dr. Becker in the middle. Um, and then uh, Dr. Shaw, another one of our PGY2s uh, on the end there with one of his children. So overall living in New Mexico, um, it's a very um, uh, sparse population. So there's um, under 20 people per square mile, which is the sixth least densely populated uh, state in the country. Uh, it's also the sixth most diverse. So we have a huge diversity of cultural, economic, um, and households. Um, and then uh, we also have um, a really rich culture in uh, Native American history. So over in Santa Fe and like on the, um, on the reservations, um, there's like over 23 Indian tribes. And Albuquerque is right kind of in the middle, a um, little northwest of the middle. But uh, for those of you that haven't ever been through Albuquerque or driven through, um, it's the largest city in New Mexico. Um, and then this is a couple, <laughs> I think this is an old PowerPoint because um, I think the rent has gone up a little bit just like everywhere else in the world. But um, this is kind of a zoomed in version um, showing the, the uh, streets and kind of the neighborhoods. Most people live on the Northeast, a couple of people live on the West side. Um, and then this is just kind of showing you the clinical sites that we rotate. So um, I don't know if you guys can see my pointer, but um, this right here is the uh, university um, hospital. And then the one on the left is Loveless. Um, and then the one down here in the bottom right is the VA. So again, really close together, um, easy to get to. So New Mexico is definitely more than a desert. Most people just think sand and cactuses. This is sand, but it's, it's, it's cool sand because it's like the white sand dunes that we have um, on the southern part of the state. And then you have mountains and um, uh, canyons that you can hike in. And uh, there's lots of lakes and rivers for fishing. Um, and then we also have Taos and Angel Fire, uh, just to name a few of the ski areas that um, are located here. So Balloon Fiesta, that's personally my favorite part of being in Albuquerque. Um, it's the number one photographed event in the world. Um, and you can see just a couple of these pictures of um, just kind of the rich heritage and culture of diversity that you see uh, living in Albuquerque. Um, and make sure if you guys um, stop by, you know, you need to figure out if you like red or green chili because you will get that question more than once. So thank you guys for having us. Thank you again, PMNR scholars. Um, I wanted to kind of open it up for questions. If anybody has any, I have not been paying attention to the chat. I apologize. Um, this is just a list um, of some of our leadership. So Dr. Dutton, as I mentioned, is our program director. Dr. Lacerda is our associate program director. And Diana, who's here with us today, is our program coordinator. So I'll just open it up if anyone has um, questions. I, I hope I didn't run through that super fast. I just wanted to make sure that we at some time. That was great. You got about seven minutes, a little over seven minutes. OK. Well, I will um, give a little um, plug, I guess. So for those of you that have not um, uh, seen our Instagram, uh, Kari Rizek does an awesome job um, kind of running that and just making sure that that you guys can see a little bit more of what our program's about and the resident life um, that we live over in Albuquerque. Um, so it's UNM PMR, uh, just easy as that. Um, I would encourage you guys to check it out. We have a couple events coming up pretty soon. I think tomorrow is the Ask Me Anything event. Um, so you guys can see some of the residents and um, questions that we've been asked. And, um, and then on September 9th, and again, all of this information is on the Instagram, um, but on September 9th uh, at 6.30 Mountain Time, um, we're doing kind of a Zoom meet and greet. And so you can um, message uh, Kari Rizak, uh, whose information I'm sure that you guys have gotten um, uh, after this, I would imagine. Um, and uh, she can give you guys the, the details on that and the Zoom link. And that's just a, a different, you know, venue essentially to, to get to know us a little bit more. Um, I'm sure you guys have, have been to a ton of um, 
you know, events like these where you get to learn more about the program. But if you have any other questions or want to see, um, you know, what life is like more as a resident here, um, feel free to, to jump on board there. Yeah, we do have an ask me anything tomorrow. So if we don't get your questions answered today, drop a, a, a question tomorrow on our Instagram. And awesome, I see that, that some of our residents have been answering some questions in the chat, so. Chris, do you think you could answer a question by Liz? Um, she said, do you feel like Albuquerque is a generally welcoming community? Yeah, so I, I um, come from Texas where like the name of the game is hospitality. Um, I've been actually really impressed with um, how welcoming just Albuquerque is in general. Um, the people here are great, you know, um, the program itself, I mean, I, I was the first um, class to, to start at this program. And so it was really kind of trying to figure out how residents were going to be integrated into um, a situation like a, a hospital, um, you know, a rehab facility that didn't have residents before. Um, and everybody has been super welcoming, super gracious. Um, they've you know, we've, we've changed a lot. And so um, they've been very patient with us um, because we've wanted to, to make it look more like um, kind of a hospital-based residency program. And I think it really has. Um, so, you know, not only at a program level and at a university level, but also the city itself. I've, I've been, um, I think, really lucky just coming from Texas, being used to that. Um, and we just kind of, um, kept going where we left off, so. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions in the chat that we might not have. And then um, Kirk also asked, how is it raising a family in Albuquerque? I think Chris, uh, Chris has two little girls, and so I think he can answer that too. Yeah, so I have a three-year-old and an eight-month-old girl, um, and it's, it's really been great, honestly. Um, so my wife actually worked for the last two years and she's now gonna stop working and stay at home with the kids um and uh it's been it's been really nice um there's lots of things to do here for kids for families lots of parks um and uh um we you know we have our oldest enrolled in like gymnastics and swim classes and just kind of things to to keep her going um and we were really impressed with the daycare uh, that we had went to as well so there's lots of options for that. Ultrasound training, I just saw by Alden. Um, so we do most of our ultrasound training with Dr. Dutton, who's a sports med um, PM&R doc. She is, again, our, our program coordinator or program director. Ooh, don't tell her I said that. Um, and uh, she, um, she is amazing uh, educator. She really kind of takes some time to, to walk you through. She has um, very packed ultrasound clinics where you may see, you know, 20, 30 people in that day. And it's just solely ultrasound. Um, so, and, and we do do some with, uh, Dr. Mouche, um, and every once in a while you'll get some with some of the inpatient rehab docs. So we get ultrasound a lot. Um, and even opportunities, like I learned how to do ultrasound guided, um, carpal tunnel releases, uh, with one of the vendors that, that came over here, Dr. Park set that up. And um, that was really cool. And, you know, even if I may, may not do that in my future practice, I, you know, might be able to, to improve my ultrasound skills, at least from that. So um, we love ultrasound here. And then we also got a question that says, which UNM teams do you work with in sports medicine? You want to take that one? Yeah, so we actually work with all of them. Um, the big sports, obviously, are the, the football and the basketball. Um, Dr. Dutton works hand in hand with the cross country and track and field. Um, so you get a lot of exposure with that. But if you have an interest in a sport, um, there are certainly opportunities for you to take on uh, sports, especially like tennis is kind of an underlooked sport. And so pretty much any team that UNM has, you can get your hands on. There's also other really cool sports medicine here. Like there's bull riding competitions occasionally. There's um, boxing, obviously MMA is really big in Albuquerque. So there's a lot of sports that you can get your hands on here. 
Yeah, and every once in a while, there'll be some big events that come through. Um, unfortunately, it was canceled due to COVID, but I was scheduled to, to volunteer on the medical team for the, um, the national championship for indoor uh, track and field, which is really cool. But again, COVID, but the opportunities are definitely there, so. And I think there was a question earlier about where your class, Chris, is going um, after graduation. Good question. So we have, um, so myself and Dr. Asanian, um, we're going to be going to the uh, ACGME Pain uh, Fellowship here at UNM. Um, and then uh, Dr. Parks is, is, and that's just because UNM matched a little early uh, for pain. Dr. Parks is um, going to be in the ACGME match for pain as well. Um, and then um, Dr. Abbasi um, has um, been in talks about going to a um, sports and spine or inventional spine fellowship. And then Dr. Tesler is in the midst of applying for a TBI fellowship. So we had to have one not go to the, you know, to the, the needle jockey route, I guess. 